this problem statement, we have the state of stress at a point is shown on the element. Determine A, the principal stress, and B, the maximum in plane shear stress and average normal stress at the point using Mohr circle. So this one's actually a similar problem we solved for the plane stress transformations video. And in this case, we're going to be using Mohr circle instead of using the equations to solve for the plane stress transformations. So let's go ahead and see what we have. We only have a compressive stress here of 30 KSI and a negative shear stress because it's downward on the y direction here of 12 KSI. So we see that sigma x is equivalent negative 30 KSI, sigma y is equal to zero, and the shear stress is negative 12 KSI. So this is where we first off go ahead and solve for the radius of Mohr circle. So there's the equation for the radius of Mohr circle. Let's go ahead and solve accordingly. So R is 19.2 KSI and then solve for the average normal stress and we get negative 15 KSI. So now with the average normal stress we're able to identify the location of the center of more circle and then with the with the radius we're able to draw out more circle so let's go ahead and graph it so drawing the axis keep in mind the normal stress here is along the horizontal and the shear stress is going to be positive going downward and negative going upward and so we see that the average normal stress is negative 15 so it's going to be on the negative side and let's say this is negative 15 ksi so this is where the center of Mohr circle is going to be from the vertical axis. And we know that the radius of this is 19.2 KSI. So right off the bat, we already have what's the maximum shear stress developed, right? In this case, doing the graphical method, we're able to see maximum shear stress is in fact that radius. So maximum shear stress developed on this element when it's rotated is plus or minus 19.2 KSI with the average normal stress being negative 15 KSI here. So how about the principal normal stresses? Well, we see we have sigma one line here and we have sigma two over here. And so from the center of the circle to the first principal stress would be the radius, right? But to know what value sigma one is, we would need to determine this length over here, right? So sigma one is obviously the radius plus the average stress, which gives us 4.2 KSI. And the second principal stress is equal to the average normal stress take away the radius, right? Because in this case, we're going negative 15, then another minus R over here. So it's the average minus the radius, which gives us negative 34.2 KSI. So you see with the graphical method, once you solve for the radius and the average um normal stress here and graph more circle it's really straightforward to solve for what the principal stresses are as well as well what is the maximum shear stress developed of the element and this is exactly what the problem statement asks us to solve for the principal stresses as well as the maximum shear stress and the average stress now when it comes to solving for the angles itself this is where you're you would be plotting your original sigma x, sigma y, and the tau x, y onto this circle. And from there, you could use trig to solve for any unknown angles and solve for what, at what angle do you have your principal stresses as well as what angle do you have your maximum shear stress.